Hello there, my name is Doug and I'm back with another episode of Pass Gas with Doug. Pass Gas stands for Pen Acquisition Syndrome and Gear Acquisition Syndrome. But today's episode isn't about either pens or gear, but actually pen services, like those of a Nibmeister. Now my spell checker tells me there's no such word as Nibmeister, but those in the fountain pen community know them as Nib Magicians, Gurus, Shamans, whatever stratospheric adjective you'd like to use. They make your nib right, so you go O-M-G. Oh. My. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those of you that follow my channel will remember seeing me receive my long-awaited Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii with two nibs and seven names. Not the longest title in the world, but... Oh, jeez. Not the longest title in the world, but damn close. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Both nibs refused to write in any acceptable way, so I took what I had learned from YouTube gurus such as Stephen, don't try this at home, Brown, and Matt Armstrong, and went at both nibs with various grades of sandpaper. I got them both to write, but they weren't great. They wrote, but they weren't great. I decided to search for a local nibmeister, expecting a local to mean anywhere in North America. I was pleased to find a wonderful guy by the name of Jack Hernandez who lives just 10 minutes away from me. I wanted to get the broad nib ground into an architect italic. So I contacted him through Instagram where he is Jackokun, that's J-A-K-O-K-U-N, and he agreed. We had a terrific initial meeting where he studied and took actually took video of how I write on the page. He took the nib and a couple of days later I returned to see the result. He agreed to allow me to film our meeting as he fine-tuned the architect italic. I also brought along the medium nib that came with the moment of zero because it was still writing horribly for me and he tuned that nib on camera while we were talking. Here is the edited video of our hour-long session in the lobby of his condominium building. I will follow that video with some writing samples with both nibs and a little chat about the experience. But let's see Wacko Jacko in action right now. Here I am with my new pen friend, Jack Hernandez, mm -hmm. Nibmeister to the stars. <laughs> so, and uh, I actually uh, gave uh, uh, Jack my Memento Zero broad nib and mm -hmm. to get it uh, tuned into an italic, uh, architect italic. And he's worked on it for a couple of days, yeah. and now we're going to see the results. Okay. So I'll probably do some close-ups here, but uh, why don't we get started? Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, let's see how, how you like it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here you go. You will have to put it into one of your pens. Yeah. Which we'll, one do we'll you put want it into? Because you're going to take my. Heat. I'm going to get them to take my medium as well and tune mm -hmm. it up because neither one of these nibs, if you looked at my previous video, worked out of the box, and I tried in my amateur way to fix them. I got them writing, but I want a pro to look at them. So I gave him my broad to make into a, an architect italic. And today I'm going to swap it, the one he's worked on, uh, with my medium and get him to uh, fix that one too. So here you go. Thank you. We're going to get inky fingers today. Oh, mine are already inked. Already <laughs> so. What ink is that? Oh, yeah. This is uh, Robert Oster Fire and Ice. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes the feed needs a, a oh, little sure. bit of even priming itself, especially if you, well not in this case, but when you had a chance to work on, like the feed is still dry. Um, Evonite? Yes. Evonite actually you have to let it soak. Yeah, let it soak into the Evonite. Yes, otherwise, in. otherwise it will start and then will hard start because right. as, as the ink is flowing, Try to absorb ink, so not all the ink will go into it. Right. Into the, the tip. Um, some of this plastic has some of this similar properties, but yeah. Still, more. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. 
I'm loving the line variation I'm getting out of this. Yeah. Of course. This is my my uh, M800. Uh -huh. And uh, that's the M800 with a pen BBS uh, fine nib right there. And you like it very, very well. And look how wet that is, you know. This is Rhodia, by the way, mm -hmm. Rhodia paper. Yeah. What did you say once? Uh, Robert Oster? Robert Oster. Fire and ice. Mm -hmm. So I think matches this pen really nicely. It is. But uh, it also gives a lot of really good shading. And I thought with, with a thick line like that and then a thin line, the shading I'd get out of it would be really cool. It does. And if you take longer lines, it will carry on and you'll see the paper uh, much more so as you see in this long strokes. Yes. How is the feedback? The feedback is... Oh, uh, it's a lot of feedback. Um, so, and I know you're doing that on purpose because yeah. it's easier to make it less feedback exactly. than it is to get it back again. Exactly. So, so uh, I would like this uh, a little bit smoother than okay. this yeah, we can do that. because I'm finding my stroke gets kind of stuck on it. Well, and, and going through this, so, uh, as I, was, I was touching the paper. Yeah. I can feel some yeah, of the... It, yeah, it's starting to scratch the paper a little bit. Right. Yeah. And it all depends on oh, how, that's heavy, nice. how heavy your hand is. It's really starting to come to flow right. now. Mm -hmm. Let's try this. Yeah, that's that's okay. Okay. before that was just the feed was dry, I'm pretty sure. It is, it is. It, it takes a little bit. Okay. Yeah, but I'm getting stuck on my upstrokes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and I try to light right with a light grip. Mm -hmm. Um and I kind of, this is another reason I like the Memento Zero uh, with the grip. Mm -hmm. I notice some people don't like that milk bottle shaped grip. Okay. But yeah. I find I can, I can write with it like here, almost right up on the barrel, rest my index finger mm. on like that slope. Like a cradle. Yeah, like a cradle right there. Mm -hmm. Or I can hold it down here. Um, and I can vary my grip depending on what surface I'm writing on. But boy, oh my goodness. Oh, Jack, that's lovely. I'm <laughs> yeah, just take some feedback off yeah, of that we'll and make it smoother. We'll, we'll take that. Back. And that will be terrific. Huh. Wow, that's very nice. And what is the grit on that paper that you're using right uh, there? This is an 8,000. Um, 8,000, okay. 8,000. I can, I, can, I can go higher, right. 12,000. Uh, but I, it will take me, I don't want to get into over polish yes. right away. And you mentioned to me before that when you, uh, when you go to like something like 12,000 grit, which for me is the pink one that I use all the time, mm -hmm. Um, you can get into where it is so smooth that it it makes a sound like it squeaks. Uh, it, it there is a, yeah that can be not, not is depends on how the tines are. It will start catching on on paper and you will get this vibration between the tines, um, and it will result in you hearing something like that. Uh, and on the paper will probably show us uh, spurs of ink. Um, what do you mean by spurs of ink? Uh, like a little outburst. Oh like, yeah, a little yeah. burst. Yeah. yeah, and that's as the as the, the tides go vibrate. back, they vibrate. Very cool. Um, it is personally, I, I don't. I, I try to avoid that, mm -hmm. yeah. and and to get into to get it off the net, you you either have to create feedback or reduce feedback. It all depends on how the tides are. Okay. Or realign in a different way. Well, okay. So it's not a simple solution. If you it's have a, a trial and error. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I have a, a couple of nibs that actually do that squeak, and it's like nails on a chalkboard for it me. Is, it's it's, like, it is. Like it is. It is. You feel like I'm breaking the nib. Yeah. That's that's how it feels to me. Yeah. Um, so I'm cleaning it up a little bit because as I am um, 
smoothing the ink um, then if I'm taking material from whatever uh, surface I'm using to grind and yeah. that will get stuck between the tines. Right. So, um, that so will you use a brass shim to, to brass clean shim it up. Yeah. Um, and it's just to clean it up. See, right. as you can yep. see, it's a little bit coming in. I, I have a uh, spark plug gapping tool. That, that one's good. Uh, it uh, goes like from all the way from point zero zero one all the way up to like twenty. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, is it a steel? Oh, it's steel. Yeah. yeah. There's one that is brass. It's a little bit more expensive. Uh, the idea of the brass ship seems it doesn't scratch steel or gold right. or things. So right. uh, the the gosh meter yeah. right, yeah. is uh, can try it. Um, it's great. What I use it when I need to use it, I use it between two brass shims because of the same idea. That's lovely and thick. Oh, I'm liking this a lot. It still has, and, and it's fine that way. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. So what I want you to do yeah, is very lightly. Yeah, that way. Yeah. I lightly do it on this bit. Just figure so eights. Yeah, your your figure eight. Okay. Just one, one, a couple. There you go. And then try it. And it will go, remember that when you're doing your cut, uh, getting a little bit of degree? Yeah. So just keep it in mind. Should I do this? No, no, just on this just stroke. All on, my strokes. On the stroke that you were having some issues. Right? Okay. So if I do this, it's catching. If yep. I do this, it's not. not. So I'm That's right. trying to round Just taking it. that edge off. Mm -hmm. And it all depends. And you're like rolling it too while you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, because I'm trying to create that kind of a slope or yes. round. Yep. Um, if you're, like in this case, if you're a lefty, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have noticed because there's no, um, there's no, it's not catching on the other side. Right. Yeah. Right. And you will find that there are pens there that works really well for one person and not for the mm -hmm. other. Um, one is the way they hold it, the other one is they may just be like this. There you go. See how it sounded differently. Now I'm holding it different than yeah, of course you are. are. Yeah. Everybody holds a pen differently, right? Oh, that's much better. Now that, that, <laughs> is really interesting because not only is it giving me that thickness and mm -hmm. that line variation but now you've taken that edge off i still have feedback on yeah, the page yeah. which is nice it feels like a graphite pencil but uh it's not catching it's not catching and, and yeah, that's much better right there i i like feedback i, I yeah. prefer having feedback than none and, and it's because i feel the, like there's a pen the camera is too far away right now probably mm -hmm. for the mic to hear this but I think what I'll do is when I get home, I'll, I'll put the mic up next to the paper uh, right, yeah. so that they can hear that because you can actually hear that on the page and it's not rough and no. it's not scratchy. No, it's actually very pleasant. It's very pleasant. Yeah. Just a little. It's fine when I roll it this way. Mm -hmm. When I roll it up to here. Okay. Okay. So, so it's more on the point. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's gone just like that. I look at it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter actually. Oh, so <laughs> for, me way, it's it's for me, it's a way uh, it's available. See that in good shape, and hopefully, with the pictures that I sent you, you, get, you will be able to see the the fine tuning from what it is now to. Now, does that look like they're misaligned a little bit to you? Uh, they shouldn't. This was a very, very hard, very hard nib. Mm -hmm. um, actually, yeah. no, it is not misaligned. What we did is we, because the way you were holding the nib, mm -hmm. 
um, it just seems like it is one up and the other yeah, one yeah, down. Yeah. But it's not really, it's just a tiny bit here polish. And that's for the angle? So you don't cast on the angle. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at when you look at a nib, you have to look at it in four ways. Right. Um, and one is, I mean, front, sideways, and of course backwards. And right. you always look at the point. And you will find that depends on how you see it, one side will be a line, one the right. rest of the line. If it is round, definitely you will always see it aligned. Um, but when a person starts to change the way they write, yeah. um, the nib will eventually change this way too, right? If you go this way, then yeah. sometimes. Now it's discussed. Some people say it always has to be even, and I, and I agree, there has to be some symmetry. Right. On your nib. Right. Uh, but your hand doesn't write symmetrical. Right. Exactly. So you try, you start with a, with a to have some symmetry, and that goes your feet, that goes your your nib, and then you work your way to whatever is symmetric to you right. as a person. And I would say, I know what it was. There you go. It is a little bit, a little bit off on the feet. On the feet. Because the feet will push the nibs tines around as well. Yeah. depending on how it's oriented. Sometimes you don't have to work on the... Sometimes you'd be surprised if you just align the feet, yeah. you would align the nib, like nothing right. happened. And a misaligned feet will also affect how the flow goes. Because and is that just flow. how the nib is on the feet or actually the shape of the feet itself? Um, when you talk about setting a uh, feet. Well, yeah, that's the spacing between the the nib, yeah. the nib itself and the feet. Yeah. And that can change. Um, it all changes how the flow is, right? right. So what you're trying to, to get the feet, the feet, the purpose of the feet is to get the heat in the nib. Right. Uh, and you want a clear channel to it. And that's why you, when some of the ideas on, on crud, because it builds on the feet, yeah, and then you don't get any flow, right? Or you don't get enough air, or too much air. So if you get too much air, then you get the blobs, yes. the paper. Yeah. If you don't get enough air. Okay, I apologize for the abrupt ending to that video, but my camera decided to shut down in the middle of recording. That's what I get for using my Nikon D7100 instead of my iPhone. Anyway, I was able to capture most of Jack's fine-tuning of the Architect Italic. This morning, Jack sent me some before and after photos of the nib, and I'll share them here. Here are a few views of the broad steel Momento Zero nib before Jack ground it. This was its state after I'd gone through my baby's bottom removal process that I documented in my Momento Zero review, which I'll link right here. Remember, the nib came to me in a really awful state. It wrote very dry and scratchy and more like a fine nib. I looked at the nib with a loop and to my relatively untrained eye, I saw a baby's bottom. You can see from this photo in particular that there was still a touch of baby's bottom that I hadn't removed. Here are some photos after Jack ground the nib into an architect's italic. You can see here that the architect italic is just the opposite of a stub. The nib is now wider vertically and shorter horizontally. So let's come back to live view here and look at the difference between an architect italic and a stub close up. This is my custom made just right calligraphy fountain pen that my kids gifted me last Christmas. I'll post a link to the review of this pen in the description. It came with three nibs and actually whole sections. This is a 1.5 and it also came with a 1.9 and a 2.5 in the calligraphy set. I use this 1.5 to do all my ink swatch cards. Now let's compare it to the italic that Jack just did. So hopefully you can see here the difference between the two nibs and I'll digitally zoom in on this when I edit this as well. But you can see that when they're side by side, the stub is horizontal and the italic, the architect italic is vertical. There, there they are close together. The writing experiences are, as you'd expect, 90 degrees from each other. And this gives a a totally unique writing experience. So let's do some writing samples with a stub and then with the architect italic to show the difference in the writing experience between the two. 
So first the stub. I'm going to uh, use the Robert Oster Fire and Ice that was in the Momento Zero to start with. Uh, but while we were testing and Jack was fine-tuning this nib for me, he went through all of the Fire and Ice ink that was in this converter. Jack refilled the pen with a lovely green that for the life of me I cannot recall the name of. But I'm going to use it for the stub. And since I don't keep ink in this pen because it's my ink sampler, I'm going to dip this pen. This is the 1.5 millimeter stub. And it is the just, I think it's just right. Yes, just right. So you can see on the horizontal strokes, it is thin, and on the vertical strokes, it is quite thick, which gives you automatic line variation depending on how you hold your pen. Now for the architect. This is a Momento Zero with a broad architect. Italic. And the vertical strokes are thin and the horizontal strokes are thick, which gives you the opposite line variation, which is quite unique. This uh, nib isn't as forgiving in terms of your hand and pen writing angle. But when you hit the sweet spot, it is, oh, so sweet. How sweet it is. Let's do some lettering. And numbers. I'm really enjoying doing numbers and printing with this. And the wetness on this is just terrific. And can you hear this? I'm going to try to be quiet here. Maybe get the mic a little bit closer. See, that's, uh, that's got quite a bit of feedback. And it's not bad feedback either. It's uh, not scratch. That's tooth. It's a wonderful feeling when you have it, have feedback tuned to where you like it. Jack tuned this nib as I wrote. I found it would uh, catch in some strokes like these, these going up strokes like that at the top of them. And he polished it out with uh, 8,000 grit. He cleverly left the nib rough 
And when I first wrote the first time, it was a bit of a shock. But of course, it's easier to polish away feedback than it is to reintroduce it. And each time you rub the nib on some sandpaper, you lose a little tipping material that you can never get back again. So slow increments with the writer's stroke and pen angle tune that nib to the individual writer. Now also missing from the video of Jack and me was Jack tuning the medium Momento Zero nib for me while I waited. Here's that nib now. I put it in my M800 Amber and he got it writing for me while I watched. Also, Jack invited me to the uh, Calgary Pen Club. There was a virtual pen meet on Zoom that afternoon, and it was a wonderful couple of hours of stories, laughter, and sharing. Thanks to Murray for setting all that up and doing a terrific job of moderating. I was able to virtually meet with uh, Stephen Brown, whom I've watched and admired for a long time, and uh, a whole bunch of local pen enthusiasts who are a wonderful, eclectic group of people. The ritual hazing of becoming a pen club member where I wrote Calgary Pen Club on my forearm and fountain pen ink for everyone to see, it washed off fairly easily, no permanent damage. This Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii just got three more names. Broad Architect Italic is quickly moving to the top of my favorite pen list. Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii Broad Architect Italic. Or what we might call L O I M Z B. No, I got that wrong. L O I M Z B H. There we go. What does that spell? Loims Babai. I like it. I'll write with this for a few weeks before I make any rash predictions about the favorites. So, thanks for joining me in another episode of Pass Gas with Doug. I guess since it's pen service syndrome, I should have changed the title to Pass Piss with Doug instead of Pass Gas. But I didn't want my video to be taken down for pissing off the censors. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote.